Hello and welcome to Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, where today I'm going to show you another one of my favorite monsters. And this one is actually in the running for my favorite monster of all time, up next to Bracky. Uh, this particular one is aesthetically my favorite monster in the entire series. In terms of fight, it's also pretty fun. It's... Music is technically the deserted island music. So, I mean, it's not like it's bad. I forgot to eat. Well, that's okay. That's what these are for. Yeah, I... Alright. I rather enjoy this monster. Of course, I prefer fighting it in the daytime when its colors can really shine, but... That's right, I am not using an Adept Switch X right now. Ah. Uh, nor Aerial. Just regular Switch X. And the reason there was even a chance for confusion is that Laggy is in fact back in generations. Ivory Laggy isn't, but regular Laggy is. And it acts a whole hell of a lot like Ivory Laggy. Yeah, I'm gonna need to not be in sword mode so much. Should have done some practicing to get the rust off before doing this, but whatever. Besides, this is an element axe. So sword mode isn't that great to begin with. Yeah, I can't really dodge through that roar. But yeah, I mean, just look at this creature. Is it not beautiful? Like, I just... I can't find anything I don't like about it. And it becomes even more impressive when you actually get to take a closer look at it. I'm just not going to go near that. But when you can start seeing that there's still some blue at the edges of those white scales, it's gorgeous. Also, this map is back in generations, and it's weird being here without ledges now. Like, in generations, this bit here... This is a raised ledge. You can jump off it. Get yourself a mount on that laggy. Not so in 3U. Well, I hit the Kelby. This is going to be interesting. I, I don't have all the tools that I'm used to having when fighting laggies these days. It's actually been a long time since I've touched 3U. I don't think I've actually really gone back to it since 4U came out. So yeah, it's, it's been a while. This is definitely a learning curve, getting used to it. But I mean, certainly nice seeing a Monster Hunter played on a big screen with a much higher resolution. All right, we're not going to flinch it. Oh, yes, we are. Nice gonna say we're not gonna flinch it but we're just gonna keep attacking anyway okay kind of wish I was able to talk more about the creature right now but I'm kind of too busy readapting to 3u also it's really weird not having free vertical control of the camera I mean if we let this thing go into the water, then we'll get free vertical control, but Ivory Laggy doesn't like to do that in the deserted island unless it is almost dead. Ow. Okay, Laggy. Did I seriously throw a paintball at this thing? Oops. 
just tried using the R, A, and B to use energy charge, which I don't have. Wow, playing Monster Hunter Cross has completely ruined me for this. Gotta face flinch. One more of those and these horns will break and we'll stop bouncing. Yeah, like... It's... it's tough to say things about something that is just so gorgeous. And the way it moves is fantastic. Like, it was the flagship for Monster Hunter Try, uh, Laggy was. So they definitely put a lot of effort into its look and its animation. And like, just everything about it. It feels like a believable creature, despite its completely immense size and the way it vanishes when going from area to area. But I mean, like... The thing's beautiful, it moves like a real creature. And I mean, even its electric attacks, you can see those spikes on its back that are meant to conduct its electricity, like... It's not just electric because it is, it's electric because of those. And then the coloration, and the look, and there's everything. I love Ivory Laggy. There's no two ways about it. There go the horns. That's good. Ow. Let's reload here. Even though, as I said at the start, I shouldn't really be using sword mode too much. Again, it's a case of Monster Hunter Cross has ruined me. Because if you're using aerial style, sword mode is what it's all about. Oh, you're tired, are you? Ow. Yeah, let's go ahead and just use that. Nice try there. Here, have a pit. Ow. Oh, really? Okay. We're fine. And sure, I could use my bombs, but might as well just do this. Apparently, I broke his chest in there. Not sure how I was hitting that when I meant to be hitting his back, but whatever. Don't really get many chances to hit the back on an ivory laggy that's on land. Which is why it is one of my least gotten breaks. Meanwhile, in Monster Hunter Cross, you can most certainly get the back of a landbound laggy. If you're aerial style. Though it's worth noting, there are definitely a couple changes Laggy has experienced in Cross, so, or rather in Generations. For example, it's got a couple new moves that I won't explain. I'll leave those as surprises, but its roar actually stuns you for much longer than the actual sound, making it one of the more dangerous roars to get hit by, even though it's a low-grade roar. Like... It'll roar at you, and you'll still be unable to move by the time it can hit you. So, bring plugs or some other way to get out of roars. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad time against Laggy and Jen. And another thing worth noting about Generations Laggy is that it's one of the tougher monsters to mount because it's actually really picky about its mount zones. Specifically, I'm pretty sure it's just like the chest and the back are all that count towards actually getting them out. So, yeah, basically if you're not aerial, you're going to have a pretty tough time actually getting the mount in. Yeah, 
it's pickier than the other Leviathans, which is weird. Because there's, you know, there's other Leviathans that share the same body type, but have different mount zones. Alright, you go ahead and go that way, buddy. I'll follow you. It is nice having uh, stamina recovery up on this axe. Or rather, on this set. I don't even remember what skills I've got other than uh, Challenger 2, uh, Edge Master, and Stamina Recovery. That might actually be it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's it. Still, it's a nice set. It's got Challenger 2, my favorite skill. I tried to go into early, oops. And I'm surprised I didn't end up dead there. Let's go ahead and use this. Oh, wow, that fully healed Kayamba. Do Chacha and Kayamba just have no health? Is that it? So it's actually kind of interesting when you sidestep with the Switch Axe in this game. It kind of rotates you a little instead of just being a straight side hop. And it also rotates the camera a little with you. Ow. Oh no, it was just Kayamba's time to come back is why he suddenly had full health as soon as I used the life powder. Oh boy. That's the problem with meleeing an ivory laggy is that comes out pretty fast. So unless you're basically meleeing it while looking down the length of it, you can't really side hop out. Of course, that's specifically a switch axe thing, really. Well, not specifically, but... Switch axes definitely have it going on. Like, if I'm looking down the length of it, well, then that's a problem. Yeah, if you attack a leg, like, hold still, darn it. Like, not this. Because that demonstrates the problem. But if we're attacking like this, then we can just dodge out. Here we go, let's get some good damage in. That was not as flinchy as I had hoped. I actually find it kind of interesting that they changed the icons for buffs and debuffs in Gen 4. Like, Thunderblight looks different here than it does in 4U and Gen. Oh, that was a good flinch. Very much appreciated. Yeah, you're upset. I get it. Good job, Kayamba. I am missing the ability to upswing out of a roll here. That was added in 4, and, you know, it's nice. Or maybe it was added in Cross, but either way, having something to do out of a roll as a Switch Axe is pretty nice. Especially when it's the upswing, which leads to the hack and slash combo. Oh no, ow. Let's just go ahead and use this. I don't expect to cart twice. Um, excuse me. Actually feels kind of weird after all this time playing 4U and 4 and 4G and Cross and the Generations demo. It, it feels really weird playing Monster Hunter with a controller in my hands again. Like, I'm using the Wii U Pro Controller right now instead of the gamepad because, you know, Pro Controller feels nicer. 
and yeah, it's it definitely works, but it's actually at the point where it feels kind of weird to have regular analogs, you know? To say nothing of buttons that stick out so far. Wow, how did I not get hit by that? And we are woefully unprepared in terms of healing. Partially because I've been playing pretty poorly. Need to get used to, I guess, technically guild switch axe. And also, you know, ivory laggy. While regular laggy in gen is similar to ivory laggy, since it can't go swimming, they actually added a few abilities from ivory laggy to regular laggy. It still... It's not quite as good at some of the electricity-based stuff. So it's definitely a different experience. Which is actually pretty nice, because it keeps the subspecies feeling unique, even though the subspecies isn't in the game. You know what? Before we go pissing this thing off... Nice try there. Ah, I see you want to shock the shock trap. And let's just go ahead and use these. This is gonna hurt, but... I've also been really spoiled by the visual effects in Generations slash Cross. I am on the wrong side, because, like, bombs actually look much more imposing when they explode. And then, like, if I do my elemental burst here, like, that explosion feels like nothing in this game. Whereas in Cross, they give it a nice, meaty explosion. It's nice, and I like it. I haven't used any of these flashes. They would probably help, you know? Then again, this thing's almost dead. That was too far. There we go. Yeah, like the explosion here at the end of this. It's only on screen for what, like three frames? It feels like nothing. Well, at least the reload animation only has to start for your weapon to be reloaded. Here, have another flash. This shouldn't take... Oh. I was gonna say this shouldn't take much longer, and then it didn't. Yeah, seriously, I... Like, I'm gonna get a closer look at this thing. Like, look at that. You can actually see the bits of blue still remaining in the scales. Just towards the edges, mostly. This thing's gorgeous. Whoever designed Laggy and Ivory Laggy... Seriously, give them a freaking medal. They did it. They made my... Uh, aesthetically, my favorite monster in the entire freaking series. Love this thing. I mean, look at that. Look at the coloration. It's, it's beautiful. And I want to see Ivory Laggy come back someday in some game that has subspecies again. Abyssal Laggy also looks really, really nice, especially while you're fighting it. But I didn't really feel too up to the task of taking that thing on solo here. At least not in a reasonable amount of time. So that's why I went for Ivory Laggy. Plus the fact that I just prefer the look of Ivory Laggy. Oh boy, it's a worthless charm. I love those. 
Wow, it was gold small. Neato. But it was not gold small list. I actually kind of miss when it would show the sizes of the monster every time and not just when it was a new record. I liked seeing how it compared to the norm, you know? Because sometimes you'll fight a monster and you'll be like, oh, that feels kind of big, and then at the end it's not a new record, so it says nothing. It's like, oh, well, maybe I was wrong, maybe I was right. Who knows? But yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. Join us next time when we fight another monster that I love from this game. See you then, friends.